Hello and welcome back to the TCM YouTube channel where we are continuing our previews of the 2023 county cricket season. And next up we are heading down south and to the south coast as we look at Hampshire's prospects for the year ahead. And I'm delighted to say joining us to do so is BBC commentator Melissa Storey and Hampshire fan I should have thrown in there. Melissa, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm looking forward to speaking about Hampshire because it's just been too long. Last September feels ages away and the fact that the teams are going to be playing friendly games in two weeks is just fantastic because outside my window right now is snow. And <laughs> I I love just cricket such a shambles and yeah. I feel like these friendly games are just going to completely epitomise that. Exactly. And I don't know if you can see from my smile, but I'm dead excited. Even doing these is just a, it's just so good to be back after such a long time. Um, so let's start. You talked about last season. Let's start there. And obviously Hampshire had a really successful season from their perspective. Building on that, uh, do you think there's going to be a bit of added pressure on them this season to perform, given that they won the Vitality Blast? third in the county championship and topped Group B in one day cup. Do you think there's a pressure on them to do well this season? Absolutely. And it was funny, we actually kind of repeated the line at the award ceremony um, for the, the Hampshire and Vipers teams. There was a joint ceremony and we were saying, look, there's two trophies next to us, but they're very, like, very easily could have been five at one point. And yeah, I, I mean, the, the county championship, I think, was the, the big kind of disappointment, actually, because... We were just one step behind Surrey that whole time. And it was really only in those last two games, the game against Kent at home, which saw me almost crash my car on the motorway when I heard that Hampshire were about 60 all out. Um, that wasn't pleasant listening. And then obviously a fantastic game up in uh, against Warwickshire, which was a, a great advertisement for the game, a great way to end the season. But also as a Hampshire fan, you were kind of going, hang on a second, you know, we should have been confidently finishing second. And things did just slip away. And... I think the key thing is going to be that there was still just a few problems in, in the selection and the county championship team, which need to be ironed out relatively early this season, because again, the tough opposition is always sorry. And that's Hampshire's second game. So they really need to kind of decide on some team selections early on so that they can go into that competition with a bit more confidence. And then looking at the white ball side of things, well, when you've won the, when you've won the title in the T20, there's going to be a tug on your back especially from Lancashire, I think, yep. after, <laughs> witnessing, after <laughs> witnessing the scenes live. You should have seen my face in that final. I was just <laughs> distraught. I had to stand. Everyone left, and I just stood there looking at the empty pitch at Edgbaston and with Hampshire doing their victory lap, just wouldn't move, wouldn't talk. It was it was excruciating, wasn't it? But it was such a good game, and, and fair play to Hampshire for... for um, for winning that. Um, so, as you were saying, I cut you off there. But uh, No, that's yeah, what I mean, they're looking, yeah. They're looking great in, in white ball as well, going forward. They are. And we've got this strong squad for the T20 Blast. So many young players who have come through. In fact, I was just having a quick glance at the team to make sure I, I actually got the, and the full depth of it. And, I mean, we've re-signed Ben McDermott and Nathan Ellis. And that was the big one. Obviously, McDermott is fantastic. We were all really excited by that. But everyone was a bit like, yeah, what, the, what about Ellis, though? You know, the guy who, you know, won us the final. Uh, we'll forgive the noble. Um, but fortunately for Hampshire, he's been re-signed. And I think... He's just so important to that bowling lineup, particularly with Benny Howell back into the Hampshire setup, because you're suddenly looking at this this team and saying, okay, you've got Howell and Ellis, who are two amazing bowlers to contend with at the death, and then just such a vast array of options. You've got the experience of Chris Wood left arm over. You've got Brad Wheel, who's just coming along in leaps and bounds, playing for Scotland, playing for the London Spirit in the hundreds. Where I think he he's almost been given a more concrete role. And I think that's helped him because he's in and out of the Hampshire squad all the time. And then you've got the fantastic young bowlers coming through, like a, like Scott Curry. I think he's hugely underrated in, in T20 cricket. He's absolutely fantastic. And just, you know, the, the depth of talent there, which is going to be on show in the T20 Blast. But then even when those big players go away during the hundreds, Hampshire has such a depth in, in their one day cup squad, which I don't think many other counties can really match. So, Lancashire. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, to be honest, probably actually Lancashire, but I mean, Lancashire and sorry, Hampshire, I would say that, that those guys were, were probably going to be up there for even when 
they lose so many players. And obviously it, it wasn't to be for Hampshire last year. They lost to Kent and then Kent went on to win the whole thing. And you know what? I wasn't even mad because it's Darren Stevens. You can't yeah, you can't no, be angry at the man. Just, yeah, again, I was at that one. I, I didn't have a good yeah. run last year. All the finals I went to. I was going to say, yeah. Um, but, but no, I mean, Darren Stevens. It's Darren Stevens, isn't it? Um, yeah. But you, you talk there about, you know, these new players coming into the side. How important do you think that is, especially when you're coming up against the likes of Surrey and Lancashire and these big teams who looked quite unstoppable and are hungry for those trophies and want them again? How important is it to keep it fresh? do you think for Hampshire going into the 2023 season? Uh, incredibly important and I love seeing this competition for spaces in the team because if you look at the for, for example the county championship the playing 11 for the final game of the season against Warwickshire it didn't have Abbott in it it didn't have Dawson in it uh, you have Mason Crane sitting on the side as well. You've got Tom Prest pushing for selection as well. And there's there's so many places which aren't quite settled yet. And I think a, a big one, Hampshire's top of the order woes are quite similar to England's at the moment of, oh, is that quite right? I mean, you've, you've got Holland and Felix Organ, Joe Weverly kind of up there at the top, but none of them have really quite cemented their spot in yet. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. You've obviously got the two options for, for wicket keepers, Ben Brown, the reliable county pro who, who did really, really well for Hampshire last year. And I also am so glad because Niren Donald has signed, I think, a two-year contract with Hampshire as well. Um, I think so yeah, I, I think at points last year, I was probably a bit too critical of Aniron Donald and some of the innings he played in the Red Bull stuff. But I think, you know, I think Basball's changed my state of mind because mm. he is actually one of those players who goes out there and kind of brings the attack to the bowlers. And it's some days it's not going to work out, but other days he has the ability to make, you know, a runnable 70 and really spin the game for Hampshire. So I'd love to see a way he could be slotted in as well. But there's always, I, I, I have the feeling there's going to be this real hustle for the the different spots in this squad and as you say if they, if they want to come up against the stronger sides in in this competition sorry mainly god i just want to beat sorry so bad i've, I've given Same. so Same much here. But, i just i really need to please. need hampshire to to back me up here but yeah i think it's it's hugely important and i think it's good that hampshire as a county is drawing in that interest still the young players who are coming through the academy are sticking with the county and we're bringing back old players attracting good overseas signings and I think a lot of that is probably the captaincy of James Vince I mean I was that was literally yeah. the next, it's like it's like you know um because <laughs> well, he's, he's you know he's he's been there he's I think it's his eighth season as captain coming in this time how nice is it to have that rock, that strong rock who's been part of that side for so long, knows the dressing room, knows the conditions, knows everything. It's just like, you know, I, I Lancashire's now got Keaton Jennings and I'm hoping going forward he can do that. But how important and how much of an influence do you think he has on that dressing room? Uh, he's just a calm head. I think even during the, the franticness of that T20 finals day, and all the players that had gone around celebrating, stumps were being thrown around. And as soon as that no ball was called, he just got everyone into a huddle straight away. And you just, you know, he's got such a hold in that team. He's got such a respect from his players. And I think he's, he leads by example because he makes such a seamless transition between the formats from batting around five in the county championship to going up the order in, in the T20s. He's just got, he's such a positive influence for the younger players and the team. Since he started opening the batting at points with Tom Prest in the T20s, you can just see that the confidence radiating from Prest, which is a lot of, you know, the reason he was able to go out and captain England in the under 19s, because yeah. he's had that fantastic role model there in James Vince. And in some ways, as a Hampshire fan, I'm, you know, devastated that certain things never went James Vince's way in terms of his England selection. And maybe, yes, he will go down as one of those players who was such a great county player, never quite, you know, put his mark on that England team. But as a Hampshire fan, you know, I don't mind in a way now because I think with him at the helm, it is our best chance of winning potentially a Red Bull and a White Bull title this year. He's just, you know, a, a great leadership figure 
And that's a, that's an interesting point about James Vince. And I wonder, from the perspective of a Hampshire fan, whilst we, we've got you here, we might as well ask, do you think he's been hard done by England? Do you feel that, you know, you look at what's going on with basketball now, you look at uh, red ball, you look at, you know, the way it's being played, you look at white ball as well, you know, they've got strength and depth. But do you sometimes sit there and just wonder... I think this could be better if James Vince was in that squad. And do you think he would feel the same hard done by those decisions? I think he, he would definitely feel he's had some, you know, some poor luck. You know, what would have happened if he hadn't have been run out in the 90s in Australia? Just a few of his dismissals are incredibly unlucky. And you can always see him occupying, in some ways, a kind of Jason Roy role, in the sense that you've seen some of his innings in the Big Bash, in the in the Pakistan Super League, where he goes out there and he just tears apart the, the bowling line at the top of the order. And obviously, Roy has had his second chance. It seems like he may be safe, who knows? But you just... Some players get a few more chances. And yes, some people may go, Vince has had plenty of chances, but they've been scattered chances. It's not quite the same as a Zach Crawley chance where, you know, he has been given a long length of time. We don't, again, know what will be happening with that. I'm probably your state, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think he's he's been unlucky. And just somewhere in a, in a parallel universe, James Vince will be playing in an England team this summer in the Ashes because one bit of luck would have just gone his way. And even in this most recent Bangladesh series, you know, you were just, I was just dying for him to, to just get a bit of luck, get an inside edge past the stumps and it, it didn't really come. So although I feel, yeah, as I say, incredibly disappointed for him because he he's just a great player. Last last year's T20 blast form proved that. What was it? Three hundreds in the competition, yeah. and yeah. I watched one of them. It was ridiculous. The crowd. Once once that once James Vince was in, it was almost you know for an opposition fan, you always feel there's nothing you can do because yeah. he just it doesn't matter who you bowl, he he just takes it away really, doesn't he? And the main criticism will always be the joke that James Vince nicks off to second slip. But as with any player, your strength is also going to be the way you get out the most. And, you know, to see the beauty of a James Vince cover drive, you also have to take the risk of an edge going to second slip. Just with uh, Ben Duckett, we've seen him get edged, edging to the slips, playing that little late cut. But he also scores so many runs playing that. And the, the controversy of the Joe Root reverse paddle, I don't care that he's flicking it backwards to, to Tim Salvi at second slip slip because half the time he's hitting it into the crowd so you know if you're playing that shot more often of course you're going to get dismissed saying it but yeah I'm happy to see him in the Hampshire team I'm happy to see him leading leading the squad because I think he, he's one of the best captains in the country yeah and uh, let's just get back to Hampshire more generally let's think about things that maybe they can improve on for this season because obviously great season last year but there are always ways to improve for you where do you think this Hampshire side is lacking? I know you mentioned the top of the order. And what do you think they can do about that to to um, to fix it? Is it a case of having a set 11 which they go with every week and give these people an extended run like we're seeing with the England team at the moment? Or is it a case of, you know, changing and finding the right mix of options? Yeah, I think looking at isolating the white ball side of things, Hampshire had an awful start to their T20 competition and they actually continued to not that actually that well besides James Vince. And they were dug out of a lot of tricky situations by their bowlers. And in fact, we became one of the main teams in the competition who actually decided to bat first because we knew we could defend anything as low as, you know, 120, 110. And so although that was great, you know, sometimes it's not going to work for the bowlers and there's going to be a good batting deck and 130 is not going to be enough. So I think for the for the white ball stuff, it's going to be in terms of just the batters just backing up their bowlers a bit more. And actually, I don't think there's going to be too many issues with that because last year, you know, we were trialling, as I said, Tom Press was at the top of the order. Toby Albert was around as well. Those two have a lot more experience this year and they're going to be able to support the the likes of, of James Vince and be able to help Joe Weatherly in the middle order. So I think the experience of that white ball side will grow as those players get older and they get a bit more settled in the squad. Same kind of problems in the Red Bull squad, you would say. I mean, I genuinely think Hampshire have one of the best bowling lineups in the country if you have the full might of King Keith Barker, Abbas and Abbott in the squad, plus maybe 
Brad Wheel as well in there. They kind of rotate that that fourth spot. And then if you have the options of of Dawson as well with his spin, it's a good, formidable bowling lineup. And it makes stuff happen at the Aegeus Bowl, which a lot of other teams struggle to take their 20 wickets. Mm-hmm. Hampshire don't usually have an issue with that, even though across the games, the pitches get slower and they just don't really do that much. As I mentioned, the, the issue is with that top order, I think they they were averaging around 20 for the first wicket or even lower perhaps um, at one stage in the season last year. And you look at the the likes of Kent when they had Compton just being an absolute, you know, sturdy figure there and movable, and movable at the crease and even Alistair Cook still and Brown picking up the runs in Essex. I think if Hampshire want to compete with those those top teams in the county championship, it will be about solidifying that that top order. Because the middle order, you know, if, if you do have the likes of Vince, Brown and Donald, I think that's a really exciting mix of, of traditional and a bit more fiery. But it will just be a case of backing up their bowlers with those kind of performances and not letting the game slip away from them. I think that's just the issue. Sometimes I leave when I'm commentating, I tend to leave around six o'clock when there's half an hour to go. And I go back to I stay at my friend's house and I kind of just check the score at the end of the day and suddenly we've lost three wickets. So either I'm an awful I've got to stay there till six thirty this next year. Uh-huh. Or you know, I just I think Hampshire get the wobbles with the bat and just need to kind of stick it out a bit more, have a bit more confidence in their approach and I've said on before, I love what Basball has done, not only at the international level, but I think it's going to have a really interesting effect on the county championship this year because young players, they've heard about how great this changing room is. They're going to want they're going to want to get in it. And also they don't have five days to play with like the England test team. They only have four. And we see a lot of draws in the county championship. So I think there will be a a lot more dynamic batting from some of the younger players this, this year. And it might just change the rhythm of the county championship a bit. I'm certainly hoping that it does. I think it's a very exciting prospect that we've got for this uh, 2023 season. Um, Let's pin you down on some predictions then now. Um, And uh, it's all right. You know, I'm terrible at predictions, but I like to get our guests, um, our guest views on, on all what they think is going to happen. So let's start then with a bit of positioning. Where do you think uh, Hampshire are going to finish in the Vitality Blast. Do you think they will once again get to finals day? I think they'll get to finals day. Mm. I, I'm i not going to say more than that because I have an absolutely horrible case of commentator's curse. But I will say that I hope they do because I want to run the mascot race again. Uh, so that's entirely personal. Yeah, I mean, well, to be fair, one day I'd like to do the mascot race. Lanky did well last year, I tell you. Lanky did yeah, well. and we all thought he was out. He was lying yeah. down on the ground. I could almost feel his tears trickling mm-hmm. down his face, and then he just lifted his head up. And Marvel, that, you know, that's what I'm hoping Hampshire's yeah, kind of attitude will be doing, this year. What we should be doing with this half hour is a mascot race preview for, for 2023. Exactly. Fact, I, might, I, might, I might make that happen later <laughs> in the season. Um, in terms of the county championship, then are you? I would love you to put a uh, a, a number on it, but I don't think you're going to, uh, as you say, commentators curse. But do you think maybe they can finish in say the top two? I see. I my gut was saying that if we play like we did last year, I, I think we would come around three, four. Um, but if we can improve on last year, then I do think we could finish in the top two positions. It's just all going to be about how we start because I've, I've got a list of our games and it's Knots at home. And that's a Knots who very likely may have Stuart Broad, um, even though they have just come up from Div 2. You know, they're, they're not really uh, much of a Div 2 side, you would say. Uh, they pretty much dominated the competition last year. Then Surrey. Then you have maybe a, a bit of a let off with North Ants, but not really. And then you've well, got Warwick. Interestingly home. enough, I was just previewing North Ants uh, before, and they, I would say, they're a bit stronger than uh, uh, people think. Especially, you know, uh, they've done some good business in the off season. But that, I think, North yeah. Ants will want to watch actually. And right in here. fact, I, I remember last year, North Ants, when they, one of my favourite players now, Emilio Gay, was mm. amazing to watch. I've hundred percent got my eyes on him 
you know, this being a big season for him, not that to turn this into a North Ants preview, but yeah, he was he was probably one of my favourite players to watch last year. But yeah, and then we have Warwickshire at home, so you may have Chris Wokes bowling at you. Yeah. So, which it's I'm very excited about. One, isn't it? Uh, it's, not, it's not really an ease into the competition, really. No, not at all. It, it is long, isn't it, uh, the county championship, and you do have that little break in the middle as well uh, in, in August that should maybe let people recuperate, uh, and we'll think about that. Yeah. And I think the early pitches, you kind of get in April at the Aegeus. Hampshire know how to navigate them. So, mm-hmm. that you know, that they're going to be moving around a lot. If the weather stays as cold as it is now, then it's going to be challenging. And I think the Hampshire batters will know better than anyone how to, to, to mitigate those kind of environment that in circumstances so you know if they start strong they could easily finish in in the top two but yeah I, i'm going to be safe and, and say around three or four but i hope and, none uh, of the hampshire people listen to this i mean um, one i mean one and finally um the one day cup obviously takes place during the hundred but uh do you think they have enough depth and where would you position them do you think they're going to get to the semi-finals final again again it's just so biased because i'm just going to say yes to everything but i do <laughs> think they will. And again, uh, speaking about the young players, a few more young players have been given rookie contracts. Fletcher Middleton, one of them, really exciting to see Harry Petrie. And I just think that even when their big players go, they have the knowledge of, of a Ben Brown in the team who can just keep things settled. But then you have the, the Tom Press and a really exciting signing as well, Jack Campbell, who came in, I think, on, on a kind of loan last year's One Day Cup and looked incredible. Like, it really got a lot of out some quite dead August surfaces. So I think, you know, with the youth we have, we could do really well. It's just going to be, I think, as it has kind of become, the One Day Cup has either been, you know, the the... I don't want to say really old, but the experienced campaigners and the young and the yeah. young ones. And, I think I actually think that's yeah. the beauty of it, isn't it? You I know, love it. I I get, really like it. It gets, it gets a lot of uh, flat from people on Twitter, but I think I, I I think you'd agree that it's it's I think it's a really good competition in its current form because you get these new stories coming through and uh, alongside the old greats like Darren Stevens last season that arc with Kent was just amazing you know so and you had the the young players like Jerry Everson and who yeah. also played a big role in that final and I think Kent actually you know they won it because they had such a perfect balance my only concern could be that Hampshire may just have a few more young players than than experienced ones I think Lancashire for example as well have a really good balance of, of youth and it's experience that depth, isn't it that these yeah. experienced players will go away and you still have uh, the young players in but there but it, it's Fantastic. So I think probably about four of these names who have now been called up to the Hampshire squad wouldn't have been there if we didn't have this period where the two competitions are clashing. And yes, you know, it's it's concerning. There's tons of concern around the, the 50 over format and it's kind of importance being diminished. And I'm 100 percent you know concerned for that as well. And I'm sure there's going to be a lots of rearranging in the years to come. But for now, I, I enjoy having two competitions to follow in August and just be able to learn about these these new players emerging. It gives more people a chance. And I hopefully I'll be able to cover a few more games of it this year because I, I don't think I've even watched a single one last year. It was really upsetting. The one game I could do was on the Isle of Wight. And I was like, honestly, no offence to the Isle of Wight, but I was like, I then. Uh, I think that's a nice note to uh, end it on, actually. <laughs> Slag off the Isle of Wight. <laughs> no, uh, Melissa, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And yes, I can't wait for the 2023 season. Not long now at all to wait. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Uh, hope to have you back on. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, and we'll see you again. Bye.